Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Cameras and Coffee, and thank you to today's video sponsor, The Coldest Water. Uh, real quickly, today's update is about the Minuta Stereo Pinhole Camera. So this was sent to me by Dominic, whose last name I have a 0% chance of pronouncing correctly. Uh, Dominic, the creator behind this, sent this to me from Germany. and. Um, so I didn't know exactly what to expect when he reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to test one of these? And uh, it's really solid. It's really well engineered. And it's a very cute camera. I have not taken any photos with it yet. I'm going to start doing that in the next week or so. I would love to show you what it looks like on the inside, but I've already loaded it up with some Lomochrome Purple XR 100 to 400 which I'm going to expose at around 200 ISO. Figured that would be a good, uh, easy way to get started. So the, the Minuta has a little lock on it to prevent, and it's a really nice click here. He's got a magnet in here for it. So the lock clicks into place. That prevents accidental exposures. Uh, then this slide here moves the shutter, which when I move it, I'm not going to do it right now because there's film in it would expose both pinholes at the same time for the same amount of time so you get good even exposure on both of the stereo images so a really good and reliable way of, the, of using the camera there there are some sighting guides and a bubble level on top which is nice um, even the pinhole cameras i'm designing for kickstarter are, are not going to have bubble level levels because they require a tripod um, so Overall, pretty solid, actually not pretty solid, very solid construction. When I saw the pictures and it was pretty clear it was like an MDF board or something like that, um, I wasn't sure how solid it would feel, but it's, it's very solid. So I don't know if they're going to, I know he's going to take these to Kickstarter. I don't know whether they're going to arrive assembled or whether they're going to be kits. Um, mine arrived assembled. So... So that's why I don't know how they're going to show up. Um, a couple of immediate things that I would, I would suggest for Dominic. He's got a tripod socket on the top and on the bottom. I might consider one on one of the sides. Even though stereo, realistically, if you're taking stereo photos, it, they are best like this, of course. Um, being able to do a stack like that would be would would give some creative leverage now the reason that there is a top and a, well a top and a bottom tripod socket is that if you notice the pinholes here are really really high up on the camera and so they're about two-thirds of the way up the top of a 126 by 6 frame what that means is that if you put your quick release on the top here and do this you've now given your images front drop the the same effect of dropping the front of your your le lens so and if you hold it upright like this you've got some rise built into the images what that means is that um, if you are familiar with rise and drop in tilt shift photography if you have the center of your lens on plane with the center of your film and everything's level, everything's going to look fine, but you can easily lose the top of a frame, like a building or mountains or whatever. So if you tilt your camera upward, you know, if, if you have your film plane here and you tilt it and you tilt your lens to take a picture of a building, it's going to look like it's falling over because of the way that the vertical lines converge. Adding rise to your images does a lot to get rid of that issue because this when you when you add rise to a negative what happens is you get more of the top of the frame and just with the way that the physics of imagery works when you lift the center of your lens or your pinhole in this case a little tiny bit it has a much much greater effect on correcting for the or including the top of a scene 
than tilting your camera or lifting the whole camera. That just has to do with geometry and it's a beyond the scope of this video to explain why the angles of the triangles work that way. Uh, by the triangles, I mean, if you, if you imagine the bottom of a building and the top of a building, and you, you take those two points and draw lines converging to the pinhole, and then continue those lines to the point where they spread out to the film, and it looks kind of like a really poorly tied bow tie, big triangle over here, little triangle over here. That's what I mean by the triangles. The way that that geometry works with, with rise and fall exaggerates the effect uh, or is a more, more efficient use of that effect than physically lifting the camera. Anyway, um, so really clever design in that regard and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it turns out, um, how, the first, how the first set of images turned out. I bought three rolls of 120 and two rolls of 35. So I'm gonna shoot those five rolls of film in the next week or two, and we'll see what the result, actually not even, I'm gonna to try to shoot them all this week. Um, and we'll see how those results are. And when this goes to Kickstarter, I'm, I don't know what date it's gonna do that, but I will uh, follow up and mention that um, when this goes to Kickstarter, because even though I've already got one, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna back it to get a, a uh, reward. I am gonna back this Kickstarter when it goes live the, because this is a really neat and very, very well thought out camera. So um, at any rate, check back in a few weeks at most and I should have some input into how this uh, camera performs and some sample images to share with you as well after I get them back. So at any rate, everybody have a wonderful Monday and I'll see you later this week.